don't have to be the world's greatest naturalist to see your local wildlife. There are, however, a few essentials you must consider. I'm in the Wire Forest, one of the most important semi-natural woodlands in England. It has been designated two-thirds triple SI and one-fifth natural nature reserve, and it's simply bursting at the seams with wildlife. So how do you get to observe all that wildlife? One of the most important pieces of equipment you'll need is a good pair of binoculars. This will allow you to get closer to your subject and view them from a distance and avoid any disturbance. Try to get a pair which is most comfortable to carry around with you. I would also recommend a magnification of 8 to 10 times and this will allow you to get a good view of your subject, whether it is birds or deer. I would also suggest an objective lens of between 40 to 50 millimetres in diameter. This determines the amount of light entering your eye and is important in low light conditions such as at dusk and dawn to see certain behavioural traits and animals. Another thing I would recommend you always carry around with you is a notebook. These can be invaluable. Try to document everything, whether it is the number of deer you see, the colour of an insect, to the description of a plant for later identification. This will provide you with a valuable record to look back on in the future. It will also help build your knowledge of your local patch. I caught up with Sylvia Sheldon who has been taking detailed notes on reptiles in the wild forest for the past 30 years to see why records are so important. Note taking has been important in my study of the adders in wild forest uh, since I began to recognise individuals and I would note when I saw each individual, its location, what time and obviously the date it was seen and I was able to compile records for each individual um, over, the, uh, over the years. Uh, it's surprising how fickle our memories can be and by uh, looking back through my notebook uh, I can sort of compile a record of each individual adder. My notes and records have been quite important. I write a, an annual report and these reports are sent on to the Biological Records Office and local landowners um, and it has been very important to note that over the years what a dramatic decline there has been in the adder population. I would recommend that Everyone who walks in the countryside and in the woodlands, they carry a notebook and note the date and the time and the location of each species seen, be it uh, flowers that the butterflies land on, the birds, uh, reptiles, animals. You too can report your wildlife sighting to your local biological record centre and help contribute to the valuable wildlife databases in your area. What you wear is important when going out to watch wildlife. It is not about whether the wildlife notices how fashionable you are, but whether it notices you at all. If you want to watch wildlife behaving naturally and not running off into the distance, you'll need to blend in. So don't try to bring any unwanted attention to yourself. Wear dark clothing, subtle greens are best and avoid anything brightly coloured. Don't wear noisy rustly fabrics, choose smooth matte fabrics which make very little noise. One of the best ways to see what has been moving through an area is to look for their tracks and signs. Wildlife leaves clues and telltale signs which you can learn to understand. Muddy paths are a good place to start looking for footprints. These are the footprints of a fallow doe and I can tell they're a doe because they're much smaller 
as a buck would be much bigger due to their body weight. Animals often leave feed remains behind too. These pine cones have been stripped away by squirrels to get the pine kernels inside and would have formerly looked like this. These have been left by mice and you can even tell what sort of mice have been gnawing away at these nuts by the teeth marks left around the hole. This beech mouse, for example, has been gnawed away at by a wood mouse, while this damson stone has been gnawed at by a shrew. It is, however, important that you stick to designated footpaths and trails that have been laid out for you. This sign, for example, identifies this area as a conservation area and asks you to keep all dogs on leads and to avoid cycling and horse riding in the area. I caught up with the Forestry Commission Wildlife Ranger Phil Rudland to see why such signs are in place. We're asking people to respect these signs just to give the wildlife in, the, in these two small areas of the forest some peace and quiet. And we're asking people to keep the dogs on a lead, to horses and mountain bikes to keep out, and for people that do walk through there to stick to the footpaths. We get a number of deer every year killed on the roads across the wild forest and one thing we've also noticed is the fact that deer have been killed during the daylight hours. This is unusual because normally they actually cross the roads and are much more active during the evenings, uh, early mornings and during the night. But sometimes during the day they're actually been disturbed especially by dogs and being pushed across the road and then they cause a great deal of hazard to road users and to themselves. A lot of people are now looking for the wild woods within the wire forest and unfortunately they don't exist any longer but people are actually trying to actually go off the main tracks and create their own and try and find these areas. One thing we'd like to sort of stress is to try and actually respect the wildlife that's actually living there all the time and not to go off these tracks and trails. There's enough out there for people to enjoy and make the most of but please don't make any new ones. There is one way however that works best for watching wildlife and causes the least amount of disturbance. Find a place which has plenty of tracks and signs in front of it. Move away about 50 metres and make sure the wind is blowing towards you as animals have very sensitive noses and will pick you up on the faintest of breezes. Find yourself a nice big oak tree using it to camouflage your outline and simply sit down at the base of it and wait. This will almost certainly reward you with views of wildlife while you can be sure that you are causing no disturbance whatsoever. It may take time to find and observe wildlife, but don't let that put you off. The more you get out and about, the more you will familiarise yourself with your local patch and the wildlife in it.